Whites doing this morning? Are you feeling good? Are you interested in learning a little bit about the great white shark? Yes! Did you know you have great white sharks right off the beach here in Cape Cod? Yes. You didn't know that. Some of you did. Some of you didn't. Well, that's great. You know, this is just really cool. As, as we have moved around the world together, you know, a lot of these guys have put their lives aside and laid their body parts on the line for the future of scientists, for world-class scientists like Dr. Skomel here. And, you know, before we really get started, it, it's one thing to travel around the world. Oh, I'm getting emotional. I get emotional sometimes. I, I, uh, I'll apologize. Hopefully I'll not cry during this speech when I start telling stories about some of these guys who I love like family. Um, but, you know, we've explored in a lot of remote places around the world. And if you go work in Costa Rica and you're 300 miles offshore, or even Mexico or South Africa, uh, and you're exploring and pioneering research, it's exciting. But there's nothing more exciting than bringing the spirit of exploration. I'm getting so emotional. <laughs> and, and pioneering new research right here in America to bring it back home to the United States of America and contribute to the future of the resource here, I think is the most rewarding expedition we've ever been a part of. And we want to thank everybody in New Bedford for, for making us feel so at home. To be here in America and have Americans come visit us and push the ball forward here has truly been one of the great experiences of our life. So I want to thank you all and all your families, the schools, and everyone for making us feel at home because sometimes we're so far away we kind of feel like we're out there by ourselves. So it's just great to be here and thank everybody for making us feel so at home. So you met all the guys, just to make sure who you understand who everybody is. Dr. Greg Skomel, he is your all's you know, leading thought maker and scientist here in this area from a fishery management standpoint and from a great white shark standpoint. So it's a privilege to be able to come up here and work with Dr. Skomel. Then we have Captain Jody Whitworth next to him. He's the captain of the ship. He makes sure everything's working as we travel around the world so we can actually capture these sharks because if things break in the midst of that, bad things can happen. People can get injured. Chief Engineer Denny Wagner, he, he's down in the engine room making sure everything works. All the hydraulics, the big fancy lifts you'll see. We have all sorts of special equipment on the MVO search. Heather is with the University of Massachusetts, works with Dr. Skomel. Juan works on the ship. He runs the hydraulic lifts and picks the shark up for us, picks up all the boats and moves them around. Juan is the chef, and then Todd is our, he's a world-class fisherman and also doubling as a camera operator today. He and Jody actually pull the sharks into the lift, and you'll see that on the video, so keep an eye out for his face. So, the great white shark. Why, what's the big deal? Why do we need to help the great white shark? It's like the lion of the ocean. It's the apex predator. It's the most charismatic fish in the world. And it, right now it's listed as vulnerable and potentially likely to become endangered. But we can't let that happen because if that happens, it will affect the whole ocean system. And how does it do that? It impacts the ecosystem. You know, when you take out the top, everything else under it kind of runs wild. And if it runs wild, that can cause a trickle-down effect that is not good for the future of the ocean, and we don't want to allow that to happen. But there's, there's challenges for the great white shark. Its biggest challenge is it has a perception problem. People don't like the white shark because of the movies and things that have happened in the past, and so everybody thinks, oh, wow, sharks are dangerous. Did you know you're more likely to get struck by lightning twice than to get bit by a shark? Can you believe that? All the people that are in the water all the time, it's very, very unlikely you'll ever have any interaction with a shark in your whole life or anyone you even know will. But the movies create a little bit of fear there. But you know what the real reality is? Look at all those sharks piled up. The reality is we're taking sharks out of the ocean faster than they can sustain. How can we let people around the world understand the condition of the shark? And the way to do that was to create a television show. So we created a television show that was on National Geographic and on the History Channel in over 178 countries in 29 languages. It's a worldwide thing. We can say, hey, we've got to look out for the sharks. And now people all over the world get to see how, how valuable sharks are, how beautiful sharks are, and that they're crucial 
for the future of the ocean. So we started to leverage TV. TV wasn't something we did because we wanted to be on TV. TV was something that we did because we could use the money to fund research for great scientists, and we had this global footprint to create awareness about the, about the sharks and their future. And so that's why we leverage TV. That's what helps us pay the bills. And, and that's kind of how we ended up here today. OK, so how are you going to catch something that weighs 4,000 pounds for a guy like Dr. Greg Skomel and let it go alive? Nobody has ever done that before in history. Dr. Greg Skomel, as smart as he is, he might not have the resources or the manpower to catch something so big and let it go alive. So we wanted to bring together world-class fishermen with world-class scientists and make these big leaps forward in knowledge. And that's what we, went, we did. So here's a little video on how that went down. Now he's coming in. Stop, you guys. No, let go. Slack, slack. Up, up. And when that lift goes in the water, we're exposed. What a moment it began. I'm just going to end. You have no idea. We're not swimming. Everybody up. What we can do is have the smartest people in the world catch things they have no chance of getting without us. So what's the key to doing that? We have this special lift on the side of the ship that can pick up 55,000 pounds. And this is how it works. Oh, it goes up and down and picks up giant sharks. And it can pick up sharks like this. This is Amy. So Amy, can you guys see the size of that shark? That's the biggest fish ever caught and released alive in history. 4,000 pound Amy, a giant female great white shark. Can you see Captain Jody Whitworth over here? This is him right here. <laughs> Look at how small he looks compared to that shark. He's a pretty big guy. And then you can see on the top, here's the whole key to what we're doing right here. Can you all see that little tag on the tip of its fin? Yeah. So every time for five years that shark comes and fins and sticks its fin up out of the water, it beams their location into the scientist's lab. And it allows us to track them and solve the puzzle of these multiple year migrations. So what is it a, a, an important thing? This is the first time in history that tag has ever been attached to a great white shark. And what that, I'm gonna let Dr. Skomel tell you a little bit right now about what that tag does. Hey folks, how you guys doing today? Pretty good, huh? Who thinks this, these guys have a really cool job? Anybody? <laughs> I used to think I had a really cool job. <laughs> and I do, I do. And, and, I've, and for the last, what's almost 30 years, I've been very, very fortunate to be able to study the fish that I love, and those fish are called sharks. I've been all over the world doing all kinds of really neat things with sharks, but I gotta tell you, in the last month, I think I've done the coolest thing I've ever done, and that's get up close and personal with the, these fish here, and it's only because of Chris Fisher and these guys. So I wanna personally thank them, not only for what they did for me in terms of uh, advancing my science, but what they're doing globally to advance, advance the cause of saving these incredibly important fish. Incredibly important. I grew up at a time when the only good shark was really considered a dead shark. It's what you wanted to do. You wanted to kill sharks because they were animals that every now and then bit somebody. But we've come a long way over the last 50 years, and I think now people are starting to realize, and, that, and you guys are starting to realize, that sharks are really, really important animals in the marine ecosystem. And without them, everything collapses. And it's only through the efforts of the O-Search crew, these guys here, that we're going to learn about these animals, that we can protect them, so that when you grow up, you can see them. Who wants to go see a white shark? That's what I love to see. <laughs> well, when I was your age, we didn't have these fancy tools to put on these animals, you know? They just didn't exist. Now we do. And this, this tag you're looking at here, this orange one, is a really cool type of tag, because it tells us everything the shark is doing as it moves through the water. So is it tilting to the right? Is it tilting to the left? How many times is it beating its tail in order to move? Is it going to the surface? Is it coming down on the bottom? What's the water temperature? What depth is it in? This is really fascinating information because it tells us how the shark moves in the water. 
Now you guys go swimming, I'm sure some of you guys get in the water and you know how hard it is to move through the water. Sharks make it look real easy. And we're trying to figure out how they do it and how they behave after we let them go. Because after all, we are bringing them out of the water and we're concerned about their health after we let them go. We want them to live. And these guys are the best at what they do. We want to make sure that these sharks are behaving naturally when we let them go and that's what this tag tells us. So it's really fascinating information and we can tell you how fast she's beating her tail and how fast she's moving through the water column. So those are the kind of tools that I'm just starting to use. And when you become marine biologists, think of what you'll have to play with. All right, thank you, Dr. Skomo. Skomo, we're going to talk about the second type of tag right now, the tag that is on the top of her fin right there. And, um, and then afterward, we're going to talk about you know, kind of what he's, the early indications are what he's um, starting to learn. So that top tag is called a spot tag, Dr. Skomo. This tag here is called a spot tag. And uh, spot is a whole bunch of words that, stand, that mean spot, but think of it as telling us spot on where the shark is. And any time that this tag comes to the surface, any time the shark comes to the surface and its dorsal fin comes out of the water, this little antenna here comes out of the water and it transmits information to a satellite and we can tell where the shark is. So any time the shark surfaces, we can track its movements. And you can go online right now and see where these two sharks are or have been the last few days, actually since we tagged them. So it allows us the opportunity to track their movements, not only over broad scales, you know, where are they going across the ocean, but in real time, in real time. So you guys can figure it out just as fast as I am. So it's a really cool tag to be able to put on these fish. And fortunately, we were able to do this for the very first time in the Atlantic Ocean. So it was last night at about this time that the guys out on the boat uh, hooked up to our first white shark on this trip. Collect all kinds of samples, um, muscle tissue, fin clip, parasite samples. And we were also able to get on an accelerometer on our fin. And uh, this is just a, a short-term tag that records really fine scale information about her swimming movements, uh, tail beat, every, we can record every single tail beat she makes. We can record her body pitch and posture, uh, look at how well she swims after we turn her loose, how long it takes her to recover from the tagging procedure. Uh, by the way, that was Dr. Nick Whitney. Uh, we collaborate with Nick. He's down at the Moat Marine Lab, which is a premier, premier research institution for sharks. And Nick was great to come up here and work with us uh, during this project. Um, so let's take a real quick look of where the white sharks are right now. These are the sharks that we tagged off Chatham. And we're going to go to the live tracker because we took this picture last night. And we'll see if we've gotten any more information on where they are this morning. But you can see Jeannie is the cluster of red dots right off Nantucket. Can you see that? And after Dr. Skomole had looked at that a few weeks later, she actually moved right in on the beaches of Nantucket. She was right on the beach and has since bounced offshore a little bit. But can you see her track there, that red track of Jeannie? Yeah, right there where the red dot is. Pretty cool. She moved around. Now, but look at Mary Lee. Now, my mom was an explorer. She was kind of a lady who liked to wander a little bit, you know, growing up Kentucky and like to hike in the woods. But my goodness, can you see how far Mary Lee has moved in the last two weeks? She is all the way down off Virginia Beach, Virginia. But the beauty of the Shark Tracker is it's for every school in the world. It's for every science class in the world. They can learn and watch at the same time is Dr. Greg Skomel tries to solve the puzzle of their life to affect policy. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring the ocean into every classroom in the world, every science class, so that you all can be inspired to learn about sharks, inspired to help understand how they fit within the ocean, so that you want to look after the ocean when we're gone and it's your turn. Yeah, I think not only is it tiring for, for, uh, for the person who asked, but you know, the, the, these guys are warriors. You look at guys like, um, Captain Jody Whitworth over there, Todd Goggin, and uh, Captain Brett McBride, their hands are getting crushed. Once we get the hose in their mouth, we put a black towel over their eyes. This tends to just make the shark, I don't know, think it's nighttime and just kind of go to sleep. They don't move as much when you get that dark, wet towel over their eyes. Then we'll quickly go into doing things simultaneously. When we were here in Cape Cod, myself and a gentleman named Brandon would immediately go to start bolting the tag on the dorsal fin. 
Dr. Nick Whitney immediately went to trying to tag the shark with an accelerometer, while Dr. Scomo was trying and succeeding for the first time in history of getting a blood sample from a live North Atlantic great white shark. While that's going on, Denny is running around the shark with tweezers, grabbing parasites off the fish for your all's leading local parasite scientist. There's some crazy looking parasites on these things. They look kind of like aliens. While we're doing that, Captain Jody right here has got a rope on the tail of the fish trying to keep us all safe. I don't know if you saw the one video where the, the shark was swinging and Jody was trying to prevent its tail from hitting all of us. Captain Jody is keeping his time on the watch, making sure that we're done in less than 15 minutes. And he's also securing the tail, trying to make everyone safe. Louis, huh? uh, we measure the shark. Captain Jody also does that with Brett, who's all the way up at the nose of the shark, trying to see how long it is and how fat it is. You know, we've caught some sharks that are almost as fat as they are long. We've caught a 16 and a half foot shark that was 15 feet around. Crazy, huh? Um, we're also at the same time, Juan, if we have to roll the ship over there, Juan has superhuman strength. Juan helps us roll the shark and he also drives the lift to put, pick the shark up and put the shark back down. Louis is making appetizers so when we're done, we can re-energize ourselves and eat some good food. Todd here, he's running around helping with rolling the shark. Is also He handles a lot of the... Um, the t test tubes that we put the parasites in and all the stuff goes in, and he's helping Heather and Dr. Scormo and the various scientists. So the key is trying to do everything at once because we've actually had 12 research projects going on at one time, and we only have 15 minutes to collect all that information. So it's about everybody working like a symphony, like an orchestra, all at the same time. And when you release that shark in 15 minutes and the shark swims away beautifully, it's like the perfect sounding music. So when you go home, you can follow these things. Just go to osearch.com and click on the shark tracker. You see the fil teachers in the room? See the filters on the left there? You can, you can manipulate all 38 sharks. And you can see the juveniles, the males, the females, the mature ones. You can see where they've been today, where they've been since they were tagged. And it changes every day. It's dynamic content. I built this for you all so you can inspire your kids every day. So please play with this. Real privilege to serve the ocean. We are a group of explorers together trying to pioneer research on the ocean's giants to protect their future. Thanks for having us. Bye bye. Have a dream, find a way to achieve it, and most of all, that you are the caretakers of the future. So the decisions that you make every single day are what we are going to look forward to in 20 or 30 years.